Hey everyone, it's Ed Kime, CEO over at Quantia, and welcome to week 8 of the Quantia Challenge. It's June 19th, 2015, a little after 1 p.m. Eastern Time, so let's dig into the portfolio. Here we have a look at our total positions throughout the entire Quantia Challenge so far, including the two positions we opened last week, the long call and the long put. Uh, in addition, it's been a very busy week because we had so many options expiring. Uh, we were able to close out of positions of uh, six different positions we had. Uh, these are positions where at least one of the legs was going to be dealt with because it was in the money, uh, but the entire position couldn't be let to left to expire. Uh, you can see uh, we, we definitely got hit up on TD Ameritrade and uh, American Rail Cars definitely worked against us as well as uh, uh, our the call and brew. Uh, we did make some money on the, the call we had with Merit Medical, which is great. That was the first position we opened way back in week one. And uh, the the some of the other positions we had, we were able to kind of eke out a little bit of a gain in. Uh, again, liquidity kind of hurt us on these positions, uh, especially because we went in at a market position. And then when we close out, uh, we were able to salvage some of that. But for the most part, uh, not as good as we could have done. And of course, a reminder that every one of these positions we open, had we not opened with a market position, we would have opened with, with a limit where we could shave the pricing. It's highly recommended to do that because every one of these trades would have performed better had we done that. Now, at the same time, we're, we have four positions that are still technically open, but we're going to let expire. Um, these are all positions that are either, uh, three of them are entirely um, are entirely positive for us, and one of them is entirely negative. So in that case, you know, we can either let the positions expire or we can let them uh, get assigned and cancel out. But either way, we consider those trades to all expire. And we will keep an eye on those through the end of the day, but so far they all look pretty clear uh, to be both in the money or both out of the money. Now let's take a look at the performance since May 1st. Uh, it's been a good week for the market relative to the, the first seven weeks of the challenge. Uh, the S&P's up 30 basis points and the Dow's up 20. Uh, NASDAQ's had some, some good movement, continued upward. It's up 2.3% now since May 1st. Now if we open this uh, portfolio using the same risk basis for all our trades, we would be down 40 basis points. And if you take a look at our cash last position of the portfolio, we're up 6.3%. But uh, as, as I've mentioned over and over again, that's not really a great way to measure where you are standing in an options portfolio. So we use the market open position. So that's where we take the cash where we are and we take any of the positions we're currently open and compare them to how, what we would have gotten had we had to open them again today. And in that case, we are up uh, 2.5%. Uh, this significant drop from last week, unfortunately, um, a lot of that has to do with the liquidity hits we took on closing out the positions, as well as many of the positions we were in kind of just operating against us. But that's the nature of investing, and that's what we're here for. So uh, we are slightly ahead of the market, which is something to be happy about, and we'll see where things go over the next week. So let's dig into this week's trades. We'll take a look at Zach's bull of the day, which is G3 Apparel, recently trading at $69.49 a share. They manufacture apparel for major brands, and they also operate retail stores, and they own a bunch of the brands as well. Uh, a lot of, In a lot of ways, uh, they can be considered the king of retail, as called out in the Zach's article supporting this bull of the day call. Uh, they are aggressively pursuing some new licensing deals and joint ventures, and they recently had a, a joint venture that looks very promising for them, including some great terms for uh, the next five years down in Mexico. And their most recent earnings call reported 15 cents a share, which beat the consensus by 8 cents. So they more than doubled the earnings expected per share. And as part of this whole push, they've been able to raise their FY15 guidance to over $2.66 a share from a original call of $2.53 to $2.63 a share. So let's head on out to Quantia and see if we can find a good trade for G3 Apparel. As we take a look at the availability, uh, we can see that they're, the closest expiration we have to work with is in mid-July. And since we're closing out the campaign next week, we'll just go ahead and work with that. Uh, and again, since we have a one-week period that we're dealing with, um, the liquidity here doesn't seem to be great um, from what we checked on. And so kind of we've got some big ranges to work with. And as a result, I think we'll probably want to stick again with uh, some single leg options, probably just the long calls in these case. Um, and then we will give ourselves, we'll knock out the budget and just see what our minimum position is that we can enter. And we will give ourselves a moderately bullish view to look at. And we can see here that the best position that we could probably get into is this long call at 560 a share. So let's click through and take a look at it. We can see uh, not looking like a lot of opportunity here, but we are just holding this really as a proxy for owning the stock for the next week. So we'll go ahead and place this trade. 
Now out on the tray to your site, we're going to step in and choose that we open with market and for the day we'll preview the order and as expected we're going to see about uh, probably $5.60 we assume we'll get the ask and we'll submit that. We'll give it a second to fill and we can see it filled at $5.60 as expected. So now let's take a look at Zach's bear of the day. It's Toomey which is recently trading at $21.57 a share. They sell travel, business, and lifestyle products and accessories. In the past earnings report, they announced that their direct-to-consumer channels had dropped by 4.6%, and the recent change to the full-year outlook also dropped to a range of 90 to 95 cents a share from earlier guidance of 93 to 98 cents. So let's pick up where we left off in Quantra and see if we can find a nice bearish trade for Toomey. We'll take a look, and again, we're, we're dealing with uh, only the July expiration, so we'll just work with that. And if we take a look at the options we have, um, kind of similar to what we had with G3 before, um, mostly everything's in the money. Uh, we do have one out of the money on each side, though. We're going to go back to the search results. And if we take a look at the stock, uh, we've got, we'll go with one trade again here. We'll move ourselves down to have a moderately bearish view on the stock over that time frame. And we can see there's a probably going to go long put just because we're keeping that single leg in place so we don't get too uh, too hurt on the liquidity when we go to close out these positions next week and so we've got a put that's uh, right right in the money um, it's probably the best trade we can make at this point so let's go ahead and choose to analyze that we could take a look the break even here is $21 so that's not too much movement downward it's a little over half a percent or a little over uh, five percent downward and so uh, you know I think we're going to kind of make the best we can out of this. And let's uh, let's go ahead and place the trade. We'll set up for a market order for the day. We're just going to open one. We'll preview that. It's a low risk. And we will submit it. We'll give it a second to fill here. And now we have our put. And there you have it. Here's our closing portfolio at the end of week eight. We've got positions in four stocks. We've got two calls and two puts, and we'll be closing everything out next week. So come back and check in for the thrilling conclusion of the Quanta Challenge. And as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please hit us up at hello at quanta.com or post a comment in the section below.